and what's up y'all welcome to another special edition of the dynamite review show on the technology news talk i know it, it's been a minute since we've done this uh, uh dynamite review show but um that we are back and not only that we're back we are our co-host back uh we are here and, and mr leland bedford what's up bro yo i'm back y'all i've been gone for a minute we had to go shoot a movie and that movie came out really damn well. Uh, so now I'm back to talk about AEW. I was telling Trika before we started, it's weird watching wrestling and then not having anyone to talk to it about afterwards. So I'm happy to be back, especially after last night episode, which was a burn burner of an episode. So happy to be back. Yeah, yes, sir. And uh, we want to uh, take this time to thank our, all of our viewers that have um, supported us that have, uh, has contributed us uh, for um, for helping us uh, get through, uh, finish our our project movie that that we's uh, currently shooting, and um, we finished production. We still have a, a couple of little shots that we need to get through. Nothing, nothing too, nothing too bad. But um, yeah, the production phase is done, so we are in post post production right now. So um, we're just we're waiting on and see how the editing goes before. We announce uh, um, uh, an official date for the uh, uh, for the for, for the premiere, but uh, everything else is good. We just want to take this time for uh, to, to to thank y'all that supported us or to helping us uh, making this film possible, and um, that we're uh, hardly grateful for it. And we want to thank y'all for it. Yeah, and if you guys want to stay up to date with everything that's going on with our project, go to Facebook and then type in Empathy um empathy movie or empathy fam it should pop up as the one with like 700 members and then also our instagram is empathy underscore film um but yeah that was a great great experience shout out to Fort nelson dakota tarn um steph perry zoe harris spencer wilson i can go down the list heath his incredible team carissa my wife phaedra all the actors all the cast all the crew it was just a great experience can't wait to share that film with you guys yeah yeah so um but before we uh well we get into this uh, uh dynamite review i want to get your thoughts on not only uh double or nothing but also the mjf uh pipe bomb promo boy oh boy uh man a part of me so i started with i started with double or nothing double or nothing was a solid show there was a couple of misses for me on that one like tori i think the middle card needed a little bit of work um the, the championship match with punk and page was really good um didn't see punk winning so quickly um but it is what it is he's the new champion i'm i'm 50 50 on that one but I mean, he has a big investment, so put the belt on him, you know. Um, but um, as far as the MJF pipe bomb goes, man, I'm at that point with MJF. If it's a shoot, if it's real, and all of this is, you know, real, then let him go. I rather, I think a guy like that could be a cancer to the locker room. Um, and I think with all the new energy that's happening in AEW, it's like a time for it to kind of get resettled and if you got you know veterans in AEW that's disgruntled let them go you know let them go to WWE I don't think it's going to affect the numbers too much um because I think if I think real loyal AEW fans is going to continue to watch the brand matter if he's on there or not um I know he is a draw and I know he is uh good at what he does uh, but at the same point in time you know, if he wants to be over there with Cody and I know they're buds, I know they're friends, then it is what it is. And it's inevitable anyway, it's, it's inevitable. So, but at the, also on the business side of things, now nah, I got you to 2024. So, you know, why give up a whole year of um, revenue that can be generated by this guy as well? So from a business point of view, I don't know. Now it looks like they, they said that it was a work shoot um, so that this is all a part of the storyline. Are they going to do a Austin McMahon type angle? I don't think so. Tony Khan isn't that personable like McMahon. He doesn't have that kind of um, TV presence like McMahon did. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure about that. But maybe it's somebody that represents Tony Khan that MJF can um, mess with the whole time. But 
as far as the promo goes, it was a hell of a promo. It was great. I was glued to my TV the whole time. Um, don't know if it was, you know, I still don't know if it was a shoot or if it was a work. If it was a work shoot, who knows? I mean, they're saying it's a work shoot, but we don't really know. We probably won't know for a couple of years if that was really, how much of that was really real. Um, but I mean, I guess with CM Punk coming out and then Matt Jackson coming out or Nick Jackson coming out at, during the commercial break, that makes it feel more like a work shoot and maybe they were about to start up a new feud with punk and mjf before this foot thing happened so it was a great promo mjf is the hell of a talent gonna hate to see him go but i'll still watch aew with or without him yeah uh the double another was absolutely was absolutely a, a a banger even though i know that so, so some matches should have not been there on the card but some of them made sense in terms of, of of debuts and how did the the, um, and the match turn out? So some of the uh, matches had a weak build, but the match itself turned out great. And then as far as MJF goes, I feel like they they're just gonna wait it out because um, because I think we're gonna get the unification match with the with CM Punk and whoever's the interim champion probably at All Out. And if it does go to being Punk versus MJF three, I would say let it happen at next year's uh, revolution. And that's where MJF can get his moment, be, be win the world title. I see that, definitely. I think if it is leading up to another CM Punk MJF feud, which I'm definitely happy with, um, yeah, let it, let, it, let it run out. Because right now, you, you just got MJF for a year and a half. So use them while you got them. Yeah, because uh, he still got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time left. Yeah, he still got a lot of time left, and I just choose to to fill in before his uh, his time is up in um in in 2024. But we'll see what happens there. But um, uh, what do you think but, about them taking him off the roster and everything on the on the official AEW roster page? He's no longer there again. It's a work, and some say it, it was a shoot. Some of the things he said, I felt like it a shoot, but at the same time, it's a work uh, to try to build up um, uh, uh, MJF to be a, a, a popular guy here in um, in, um, in AEW. But because um, yeah, you you remember back in the day when Punk did his pipe bomb and had the feud with John Cena in 2011. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but they're making this a uh, uh, a little bit different, but kind of similar. A little, a little bit different, but kind of similar to that feud. But uh, how are we gonna go uh, go back to the feud? I don't know. But um, like I said, because um, they can't do it all out right now because I feel like at all out, that's where we're gonna have that unification match that happen. So, uh, right. yeah, let the unification match happen, and then let Punk hold on to the title for. The rest of 2022, and that's where you do CM Punk versus MJL three and Netshirts Revolution, and that's where MJL becomes the world champion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely want to give him the belt when he has enough time um, and um, before his contract off, because you don't want to have that situation if he takes the belt over, you know. Um, and I'm sure they'll make sure to get that done correctly. But I think. Uh, I hope to see them work it out. It makes for good TV. Um, and then also, before we move off Double or Nothing, we had the debut of Athena, which I'm hella happy she's in AEW. I actually got goosebumps when I seen her come out. And I was just ecstatic to see her finally on my TV on, uh, on a AEW product. She's a hell of a talent. She's really good. She's always... And she's super professional. I think the time at NXT helped her become more professional. Um, I met and spoke with her a few times when I was working the NXT stuff at Full Sail. Uh, she's always, she was like just a natural leader. She was always the one leading all the like uh, female wrestlers to where they need to go, how to do certain things. So it is really good to have someone like that in the locker room. And I think it ups their uh, women's division in a big way. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about that uh, uh, as well, and uh, we're going on with with this dynamite review. But first off, uh, 
let's talk about it from the top. Um, Dynamite started off with the Battle Royal to see who would go on in the main event to face uh, the number one ranking and current number one contender, John Moxley, in the main event. So in the Battle Royal, the final four was Ray Fiennes, Andrade El Idolo, Kyle O'Reilly, and the return of Willie Yuta from who had his um who had returned from Japan from the uh, from the Super Juniors uh, tournament. So um, but then, but in the end, uh, it was uh O'Reilly winning at the uh, el- 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 eliminate uh, Yuta to to win the match. So um, and then after the match, the cameras cut backstage to John Mossy saying the road ended here for for O'Reilly. Him going to Forbidden Door will be the end result in three years in the making. The entire sport belongs to him. I, I can understand that. <laughs> okay, but um, my thoughts on the Battle Royal. I understand that there's a lot of top guys uh, who are injured right now, but that's not a problem with Tony Khan because like, if, if one person is going to go down, and, 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 uh, there's no problem. Uh, uh, he has a, a ton of roster that he can make up for uh, the, the, to, to replace. Unlike WWE, who has nobody, that, uh, but, but that's another story. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, because I feel like there's some of the so some of the participants in this match were like tag team wrestlers who, who is not really like believable to beat um. Uh, to, to beat John Moxley, all like the other half of the Battle Royal was uh, was believable to, to have a um mm-hmm. a good like five star match with um with John Moxley. because like, I uh, again I understand there's a lot of stars like like Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, um Scorpio Sky. There, there, there's a lot of people who are on the injury list. Uh, I understand that, but um yep. yeah, but um. I will say this: it, when I was watching the Battle Royal, I was just like reminded about like how much like great talent they actually have in this company. I mean, uh, like the first round of people who was in there, I was like, okay, out of that group, it was Darby, it was Eddie, um, it was uh, Nice. Um, I can't remember who else was in there, but I was like, oh, out of this group, Eddie. You know, I want Eddie to win it. And then the next group came, and then it was like two of those guys I wanted. Then the next group came, and it was like three of those guys I wanted to win. So I was just reminded about how much talent that was in there. And then, well, actually, I gotta just point out: Did you? Can I talk about the swerve part? Did you? Did you talk about that part already? Can I get to the swerve part? Yeah, because um, swerve was like, oh, like I, I understand. It, like you can't blame the guy. It's a, a it's a spot to be a world champion. And uh, if you had to turn your partners for, for one night, hey, that's no problem. Right. And like the thing was before when they first came out, I was talking to my wife and I said, man, Swerve and Keith Lee is my new favorite AEW tag team. <laughs> like I, I've really been high on them. They're really good at double or nothing. And I really just like the, um, their, their dynamic. Keith Lee at uh, Double or Nothing. At, oh my God. Uh, that was a great one. Uh, but they've been, they, they, they really became one of my favorite tag teams. And then when Swerve did the Keith Lee, I was like, no, don't ruin a good thing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they're going to resolve it and they're still going to be a team. But they were one of my favorite tag teams. But then he also, the way he took out Darby was cool. So I see Swerve in that match kind of building some kind of story for him where he really can't be trusted and that he can swerve on you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So I did like that. Like, I know you said like a lot of them were tag teams. Like, I mean, that claim in the ass boys, there was a lot of teams in here. Um, But for the people that was in there, it reminded me how much good talent they really do have. Yeah, but uh, some of those um, tag team wrestlers can can go on to be like, like said, singles competitors like uh, Swerve, uh, Keith Lee, um, Ricky Stars, um, mm-hmm. yeah, that powerhouse. Of, like those type of guys can, uh, even though they're in the tag team, but they can still go on to be like singles wrestlers. But I'm talking about like, um, like John Silver and like those type of guys. 
that are in a tag team that's not really ready yet for a singles one. Uh, the, the, those type of guys, like Matt Cast, Matt Casters from the Acclaim, like the, those guys. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, like a lot of those guys, like you know, we kind of knew they didn't. I mean, that's how a lot of battle royals are. Like you know, you kind of these guys ain't have a chance. Now, did I expect it to come down to like the final four that it came down to? Not at all. I did not see Kyle O'Reilly winning this thing, to be honest. I'm glad he did because he had a hell of a match later, but I did not see him coming out on top of this one. Yeah, even though O'Reilly uh, is in a tag team with uh, with Bobby Fish there, and they're a great tag team, but I feel like those guys didn't get and pull out a good a single runs for themselves. Definitely, definitely. Um, Because uh, Kyle O'Reilly is part of the team, and he still was the one to win it. But I don't know if Kyle O'Reilly – I mean, I know he was singles for a while in NXT, uh, but he's usually a part of a group or a tag team. Yeah, but um, because uh, uh, O'Reilly can get okay, – but he had, like, singles victories over Jungle Boy, um, uh, Darby Allen, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of those guys. Uh, he was on the run, and I see how – they, uh, he went. He went to the Battle Royal tonight because Tony Khan is definitely uh, uh, has high hopes for for O'Reilly uh, as well. I see why uh, he won his Battle Royal. I I would have preferred um, Andrade to win the match, but um, it is what it is. But um, and then we'll get to into the main event uh, later on. But um, after the um uh, the 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 Battle Royal and the and the promo, the announcers gave us the update on CM Punk's uh, for foot uh, surgery. It was a success, and then uh, they are now uh, later on in the weeks, uh, uh, in the coming weeks, to see uh, how uh, the 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 injury uh, uh, is going on. But um, after that, AEW introduced a new championship called the AEW All Elected Championship with a brand new belt featuring international flags, uh, like uh, in the in the middle center play of the championship. It kind of uh, to me. It kind of looks like the Intercontinental and the European Championship uh, uh, combined. Now, I know that some of y'all are saying, but what about the, T- the, the TNT Championship? Like, don't get it twisted. It's still like the War Girls title, okay? But I'm just saying, like, the AEW, the all Atlantic Championship, I feel like that championship can, can go across, like, different companies or like a different continent you know what i'm saying that's why i say this all like the championship reminds me of the intercontinental and the european championship of uh, combined now with this championship we will be having an eight-man tournament to crown uh, a new a new inaugural champion with four of the winners of their respective single matches to meet in a fatal four-way at forbidden door now the first round matches are Buddy, Mer- Buddy Matthews representing in Australia versus Pack representing the UK. Then we have Ethan Page representing Canada versus Miro representing Bulgaria. Then we have Penta representing Mexico versus Matakai Black representing Netherlands. And then a New Japan uh, exclusive match that's going to happen down the, uh, down the road in, in, uh, in, New, in New Japan. But, um, what are your thoughts on the the new AEW All Atlantic Championship and then the tournament for, for for this championship? So I was really excited to see that they kind of got a new belt because I don't, I know like one of the sayings is that if everyone has a belt that nobody has a belt or something like that like it diminishes like how much the belts mean. But I remember growing up in the Attitude Era. And there was a lot of belts. <laughs> like it was the hardcore belt, the crucial weight, the European, the IC, the world chat. Like, so for me, I like it when a promotion has like five or six belts because it just gives more divisions for people to be a part of, you know? So now those rankings kind of work in other ways because maybe you're number one ranked in the All Atlantic division, but you're not number one ranked in the world championship division 
So I just think I I me personally, I like it when the company has more belts. Um, so I was happy to see this one. Now they are getting a lot of flack about the name of it, the All Atlantic, and then they have Japan and China on it, and it's not in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so that's odd <laughs> that they're they're getting flack about it, but it kind of is what it is at this point. It's out. They're also getting flack that it kind of looks similar to the women's championship belt. And it does and it don't. If you look, there's a lot of differences between the two belts. They just share that square kind of thing with the four golden circles in, in the corners. That's the similarities they have, but the plates are different. The, ink, the designs are different. So there's a lot of differences there. But for me, I like this. I like you when a company has more belts and I'm happy that there's something different for all the um, foreign wrestlers is out there. Um, Cause I mean, technically, you know, Omega can win that belt since he's from Canada, you know? So it's like, will it just be for foreigners? Can Americans, you know, eventually wrestle forward? I know the tournament is right now more for foreigners. Um, and I think, I wish they kind of would have gave us more of a um, time to get our, our head around it. And like maybe last week announced just the belt and let us not see it until this week and then start the tournament. But I'm digging it. I like it when companies have more belts. Now, as far as championships, they currently have seven championships right now. We have one world title. We have currently right now um, with the with this um, all anti championship belt, we have two mid card two mid card titles, the all Atlantic and the TNT title. We have one women's world title, and then we have one women's mid card title. Then you have the tag team with um with the world tag team titles, and then the FT FTW championship. I don't know where that lands in, but um. But then again, you have uh, um, FTR who holds the uh, uh, ROH uh, tag team titles. But then once Ring of Honor has their own like show, it, it's all gonna go come in and come in and blend in. Uh, but uh, but a lot of people are saying that AEW has too many championships. No, they don't. No, they do not. Unlike WWE, who has too many titles and then don't really um, cherish their titles. Unlike Tony Khan, who actually Cherish uh, his championship and actually put prestige to that chair to those the, to those uh, uh, AEW respective titles. But um, I feel like the um, with the uh, all all Atlantic championship, they're definitely gonna put some respect uh, into that championship. And um, yeah, like I said, this championship is gonna be uh, defended across uh, um, all continents and all championships because like you see all these. Uh, first of all, the combatants in this tournament has represented a certain country. And I kind of like that. It kind of reminds yeah. me of the, 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 the world cup, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this tournament. And it, and it looks really good. So, um, I just can't wait to see who advances, uh, to forbidden door. So we have our first qualifying match the with, uh, pack representing the UK versus buddy Matthews representing, uh, Australia. So this match pits up from well, from what they had at at double or nothing with um the their trios match where they had but it ended up with um Julia Hart finally finally joining the House of Black but um uh yeah, in the final moments of this match um Matthews went for a thrust kick uh, in the ropes but Pat blocked it and hit a sick poison runner in return. Then Black climbed the ropes and landed the, the Black Arrow for the win, and he advances to Forbidden Door in the Fatal 4-Way match to crown the new inaugural All-Atlantic uh, Championship. So, and then, of course, the, the teams looked on. And then, of course, you know, Panta is looking at Malachi Black because uh, they're going to have a quality ma qualifying match soon. I don't know if it's going to be on a rampage, or uh, on a dynamite uh, 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 in the coming weeks before Forbidden Door. So, Pack yeah. uh, advances. This match was freaking awesome. I think it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, they were hitting hard. They were fast. It was quick. It was nonstop action. 
<coughs> excuse me. And um, yeah, um, I thought Buddy had it for a second. Um, but I like that they're continuing this uh, feud. I want to see more of this actually kind of more one-on-one -on -one matches. I think the next one they might do is Penta versus Malachi. I think be a good one. <clears throat> and even Phoenix versus Brody. I know it's a mismatch type match, but those are sometimes some of the best ones. Um, so, but no, uh, Murphy, uh, Buddy and Pack was just a classic. It was, it was hard hitting. It was exactly what I wanted for that match. They can fight forever and I'll watch it. Absolutely. And, um, but uh, at, after this match, Eddie Kingston went backstage. He called out Jake Hager for costing him a shot at the AEW World Championship before running down the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society. And he wants a Hager for Rampage. So obviously, this match is building up towards the blood and guts match and I'm uh, in two weeks with it's uh, gonna be in Detroit my hometown I'm not there oh that kills me <laughs> <laughs> in Detroit my hometown can't be there but um yeah yeah so um yeah we're getting um uh Eddie Kingston versus uh Jake Hager on Rampage uh, we'll talk to about that in a in a few seconds but um and hey, this go, quick, real real quick, yeah. Cut, not to cut you off, but who would you? So on that bracket for the All Atlantic, they got Ethan Page versus Miro. I think Miro is going to go over Ethan, but whoever wins that match between Ethan Page and Miro faces somebody from New Japan Wrestling. Who would be a good opponent? Um, who would be a good opponent for Miro from New Japan? Uh, again, um, the way the bracket is, is that it's a four way uh, match. Yeah, it's a four way match. I know that, but if you had a, a, a perfect opponent for Miro, if you're if you got anybody from New Japan, who would you want to see versus him? I don't know because um, I gotta see uh, who actually is gonna be on the uh, on New Japan side. Um, yeah. The, yeah, but um, so who do you? But I oh, have to say who who's gonna advance. I would say. Miro's going to advance, and, and Malachi Black is going to uh, advance. Yeah, they want to put Penta and Pack versus each other. Um, so, yeah, Malachi Black, and then whoever this New Japan guy is going to be, uh, Miro, Pack, Miro, Malachi Black, and whoever New Japan brings. Yeah, so that's uh, that's who I see um, advancing for the Fatal 4-Way, but we'll see... Uh, um, uh, in um in two weeks, so who actually gonna be advancing? But um, Trent Beretta was in the ring. He said he was bumped out because to the yesterday, uh, what well, today? Uh, you what is actually yesterday? But was supposed to be <coughs> National Best Friends Day, but his friends wasn't here, and he also thinks Rubber Party Vice deserved another shot at the ROH Tag Team Titles after the United Empire interfered in their last title match. So he called out FTR. FTR obligated, and Cash said he agreed with Trent's uh, assessments of the situation. Plus, they are fighting champions. Dash said it was it's Osprey that could that that Trent should be mad at, not, not at them. So, and that's when we heard the music. Will Osprey emerge? He made his entrance. Then Aaron... Hatcher and actually open of the United Empire ran out and attacked FTR and Trent from behind. Actually, or open hit their double double team finish on Trent. Then Osprey smashed him with a hidden blade. United Empire poses at the end of the segment. So, do you see um, FTR versus the United Empire? At Forbidden Door. Oh, that's going to be cold. It might be FTR and Rapungi Vice versus um, those guys. Like, them. they got enough people there. Why not make it a, um, you know, uh, a, a eight man tag? So, um, but yeah, I think, uh, but first off, that hidden blade is crazy. That's a dope finisher. And then also, 
Osprey is on AEW. How crazy is that? Yep, he made an AEW debut, but um, we'll see uh, how how long this is gonna be. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just a one-off thing to uh, to, to promote uh, here for Forbidden Door, or is gonna be there um for a certain amount of time? We don't know, but um, uh, all I know is this is definitely uh, the, the this potential feud is leading up to Forbidden Door. Like honestly, like when I'm trying to show wrestling before AEW came out, when I was trying to show a good wrestling match to people who don't watch wrestling, I put on the Ricochet versus Osprey match. That is a match that I think just stands on its own. You don't have to be a fan of wrestling to enjoy that match. So I've been waiting to have him over here for a minute. And I do hope that he gets a taste of American television and want to make that move over permanently one day. Yeah, well, we'll definitely see. Uh, uh, see how it goes. And um, Kyle O'Reilly was backstage with the Undisputed Elite, and William Regal was standing uh, on the opposite side. Regal said that O'Reilly was talented, but he's going to be on commentary. And while O'Reilly gets his head cracked open, O'Reilly uh, said he came to AEW to fight for the world title. And then that's where Adam Cole lead to join commentary for the uh, the next match, which is Hey Man Adam Page versus David Finley from New Japan or Pro Wrestling and also the son of Finn Finley. And um, this was a pretty good uh, knockout match. And um, uh, at the end, Page flip out of the German and level Finley with a with a close eye before hitting the butt shot Larry for the win. And then after the match, Paige said there was a lot he wants to say about the AEW World Championship. And um, but it looks like he won't be getting any time a, a title shot anytime soon. Well, that depends on your wins, loss records, and the rankings. But we'll see how that plays out. But um, but then he remembered that there's more than one world championship in professional wrestling. So at Forbidden Door, he wants the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, and he wants Kensa Okada. But then Adam Cole came out of, comment, of the commentary area and pointed out that the champion might be Jay White by the time Forbidden Door rolls, rolls around. But unlike Paige, Cole is a champion having uh, him winning the Owen, Cup, Owen, Owen Hart Cup, he thinks he deserved a shot at the IWGP World uh, Heavyweight Championship. So where do you see this uh, lead at, in terms of uh, Forbidden Door? Um, I think we're going to see Okada on AEW television, that's for sure. Because why wouldn't they bring the big guy? I can't wait to see Okada in an AEW match. Oh, that's going to be great. Um, as far as who he faces, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Again, Jay White can be champion. But now that the Forbidden Door is coming up, it seems unlikely that New Japan would do a drastic change like that um, before this comes up. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I think Hangman versus Akata to me would probably be a better match. Just because Hangman is bigger, he's got a bigger frame than Adam Cole, uh, he hits harder. Um, so, yeah, I, I would have to go with Hangman for that one. Yeah, um, uh, Hangman versus uh, uh, Okada uh, definitely is a better match, but um, I'm trying to see when it does Okada and Jay White's match. It, oh, it's going to be on the on the 12th. So, well, we'll, we'll damn it, yeah, we'll definitely see who wants out the champ um, uh, on the 12th. So, that, that just definitely, uh, you guys, is at the uh, New Japan uh, Dominion on, on, on June 12th. So... Do you guys uh, keep an eye on that to see uh, who actually come out as champion of the uh, for that? So uh, and then we'll see uh, who actually gets a shot at, at the title. If it's going to be Heyman Adam Page or Adam Cole. Yeah, but let's 
I mean, Adam Cole is on the roll right now. He has that beautiful Owen Cup belt um, on him now. So, yeah, he's on the roll. I mean, he beat Samoa Joe pretty clean, too, because the distractions from uh, Bobby Fish wasn't, you know, too drastic. So, beat him pretty clean. Yeah. I don't know. I think the crowd didn't like that one. I don't know how. I felt kind of a little indifferent about it as well, too. I think, I don't know. But seeing Samoa Joe up there with Brent Baker would have been weird. I don't know. I think uh, going back to that match, because we haven't had a chance to talk about it, but I think looking back on it, I would have put Joe and Ruby over them two and then let the couple be like the losers. You know what I'm saying? And make them like bitter and sour. Um, I think Joe has a lot of momentum or had a lot of momentum. And I think that would have been good to let him win that. And then it would have made things different now. I think about Joe versus Okada. Uh, anyways, I digress. Yeah, but um, speaking of the women, uh, earlier earlier tonight, the AEW Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa itched out an open challenge to anyone in AEW. And then the uh, the problem, Maria Shafir was somehow right there, and she walked up. She said she liked to be Rosa's problem. And she's wondering if Rosa can solve her. Now, this was kind of weird. I don't know where um, Marita Shafir uh, is ranked in. I know she's been getting a lot of wins on Dark. But, she's uh, number five. Yeah. But um, the last title match she had with um, with Jay Cargill, it wasn't that great. But um, no, I listen, I don't watch Dark as much as I probably should. So I am not too familiar with her work. Maybe on dark it looks better, but when she's on the big, like the big time, the prime time, she doesn't look that great in the ring right now. She had one good little move yesterday where she like did the flipping kind of thing on Thunder Rosa, but you know we've been hearing grumblings that Thunder Rosa hasn't been happy with her spot with her TV time, so they I guess this is just the match they gave her. Um, now should it have been a championship match? Probably not. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But it did serve its purpose to kind of set up the post-match and what happened there. But I need more time with, with the old girl before I think she's something, you know, right now the problem is she's not getting over. That's the problem. Yeah, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. But um, Tony Shavari brought out Warlow, who says, welcome to Warlow's world. Warlow asked, why he did not take uh, take part in the Casino Battle Royal or, or tonight because CM Punk is the champion. So if he's not beating him or uh, or making him submit, he doesn't want it yet. But, however, there is a title that Warlow does want, the one that has proceeds but that has been demolished recently, and he wants the, uh, the TNT Championship. And then Scorpio Sky walked out with the title in hand, yeah, eat the page that Dan Lambert ran out to talk him down as he was injured. Warlow says, I, I'm all elite, so I'll wait till you uh, till Scorpius guy is healthy and to like 110%. But then backstage, Mark Sterling with the AEW security, he's giving Warlow two options. He can he can uh he can face Warlow in, in, uh, in the quarter law, or he can re- wrestle. To 20 security members on TV next week in, a, in an elimination match. So, two things. They try to make Warlow uh, as popular. Uh, uh, well, he's already popular for what the, the match he did in, uh, in, with MJ up. Now, they're just trying to build him up towards whenever the Warlow and Sky, Scorpio Sky match that happens for the TNT Championship. So, they just make him work a lot of squash matches to make him more powerful because, but uh, uh, listen, to be honest, it, it, he got to get out of this March Sterling thing. This is just, it's just stupid. I I, I understand this. It's funny at times, but it just, this got to go. <laughs> this seriously got to go. I'm sorry. This got to go. Yeah, seeing him beat up security guards made sense during the MJF thing. Does it make too much sense now? And I think if they would have just ended 
the segment with him and Scorpio Sky, that would have been enough. But then Mark Sterling jumps in and he's yelling at Warlow. Oh my like, man, Warlow has a lot going on right now. That was just too much for me. Um, but I mean, it's going to be entertaining next week to see him throw these guys around. But I think we had our fill of that, you know, during the MJF. I think we, ha- I think we're satisfied with you being up randos um, for now. I think, I think if if anything, they should have just put him like in a mini feud with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who would be a good mini feud for Wardlow right now. I don't know. And that's probably when they put them against security guards next week. <laughs> but who's like the the jobbers right now? Private party. Let private party come attack them. And that would have been something at least more than just these security guards. But um, uh, when we get to uh, Scorpio Sky versus Warlow match, do you think this is just a setup for uh, the Scorpio Sky just to lose the title? But um, if it was me, I would say let them have their match, but let it end it in a um in a screw finish. Not that uh Warlow needs to lose, but let's say something like happens or Scorpio Sky um escapes Warlow and but still retains the title. So just to, to, just to make the feud more and more entertaining if they're gonna go that route. Yeah, it needs to we need to we need to feel like Warlow really is taking his time to get to the title. So, like, not the first match, he just squashes Scorpio, but, like, have one of the top team guys come out, the MMA guys come out and give Warlow, like, a, you know, a nice right hook when the referee's not looking and puts him out and then let Scorpio win that way and then get a rematch and a rematch. But go through that whole, you know, story with them. That would be entertaining, actually. Um, and then they want to put the belt on Warlow at the end, put the belt on him, you know, and let him go from there. Will he be the first ever TNT AEW champion? You know, what's, what's that going to do? Are they going to make a new belt called the Midwest belt? And then he gets to fight because it's from Ohio. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Cause um, I don't want Scorpio's guy to lose the, the title to jab because um. Because his new custom belt with the uh, with the Lakers color color on it, it looks absolutely great. But um, and he's yeah. doing a great job as champ. Like he's doing a really good job as champ right now. But um, if the if the if this is a thing, let's say if Warlow wins the wins the belt again, and uh, and he gets his own custom belt, and uh, will it be similar to um to Miro's custom title because it is green? I don't know, like, if, if this is going to be a thing, like, whoever wins the TNT title is going to have, like, uh, different custom-made colors. I don't know. But um, we'll see that uh, d- down the road. But um, the Young Bucks had a video promo backstage, and they've been on the road uh, recently. They, they had a fantastic match with the Hardys at Double or Nothing. They had an absolute banger match with the – um. Uh, with the Lucha Brothers on Rampage. So while they was cutting the promo, Matt and Jeff Hardy walked in. Matt talked about beating the tag team champs and the, the, the Lucha Brothers last week, saying that the Young Bucks are, are, are back and then that they want the, 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 titles, uh, t- the titles back. Hmm. Uh, the Hardys walked up and Matt Hardy pointed out that they are beating the Bucks and then Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian Cage came up. And Christian said that those championships has to be earned. And uh, even though that um, – the um, I don't know who who was it, Matt or, or Nick, that beat um, uh, Jungle Boy in a singles match, but uh, but then Christian mentioned the titles were not on the line. But when the titles on were on the line, it will be a lot different. So Christian threw out the challenge – to both teams, it will be the Hardys versus the Young Bucks versus the Jurassic Express in a ladder match. That is going to be interesting. Only because, like, Luchasaurus is a big dude. Don't see him in too many ladder matches. Um, and it's interesting that Christian was the one to call the match. You know, I know he has his history with um, 
do you see Christian going heel? I'm starting to see these little things about Christian where I think he's going heel eventually, or he's just like getting complacent being the manager of Jurassic Express. Um, but no matter who wins this match, I think Jurassic Express is going to hold on to it a little bit longer. It's going to be an exciting. Get the Bucks, Hardys in a, in a ladder match. Come on now. Like in the stuff that Jungle Boy does in a ladder match. Come on now. It's going to be a, it's going to be a dope match regardless of who wins. Well, with this ladder match, this takes me back to the Hardys, the Dudleys, mm-hmm. and Edge and Christian. Facts, facts. That's what they're going for, man. That's why it's a triple threat. Let it out. Now, just because the ladder match don't mean tables can't be involved and cheers can't be involved. You know, that's just a part of it. Yeah, yeah well, most definitely. And um, who I see winning out of this, the Young Bucks might take it or the Hardys um, that might take it. And um, especially because um, – or the Jurassic Press could win. I don't know who wins, but uh, the uh, it's a it's a fifty fifty split between all all three all three teams. But we'll see next week. But um, AEW Women's World Championship match: Thunder Rosa versus Mar- Marita Shafir. So uh, this was a back and forth chain wrestling right out of the way. Shafir gained the uh, the advantage with the snap suplex ahead of, uh, of the break. Once back from the break, Rosa fire up with the knees. And then a Northern Light suplex for the two. A Death Valley driver for Rosa got the two more. Shafita caught a kick and then lift for Rosa, but Rosa turned it into a cradle for the two. She did it again. Uh, 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 I did. She did it a second time, but then finally got Shafir for, for the win. But then after the match, Shafir tapped Rosa and locked her in an integral submission. Then Tony Storm ran out to make the save. Rosa plants Shafir with the modified pile driver, but then Tony Storm grabbed the belt, but then yeah, she gave she gave it to Rosa, but they uh, exchanged looks. So, where do we see Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm in the future? Uh, I think we're seeing a women's championship match. It'll be fun to watch these guys cut promos in each other. I think it'd be fun to see kind of how they handle each other in the ring. Uh, but I think we're leading to that championship match. Tony Storm will be the uh, new competitor for this belt. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I wonder if Thunder was going to be competing in Forbidden Door. And uh, if I had the, uh, a pick an opponent for it, I would say Kyrie Sane. That would be good. That'd be a good one for sure. Yeah. But then um, after the match, Jay Cargill, Stokely Hathaway, which was another debut at, at Double or Nothing. And uh, this was the right uh, manager to manage um, uh, Jay Cargill the, better than Mark Sterling. Uh, this was a, um, a better choice. Uh, I liked uh, Stokely uh, there. And then also the baddies were backstage. Uh, Hathaway said that Chris Danlander is going to go one-on-one with, with Red Velvet or Rampage. And then there was a, uh, in the promo, there was a little um, Keith Sweat, uh, nobody's uh, uh, song in there, which, which was funny at, at the time. So, um, but this all building up to Athena versus uh, Jay Cargill for the uh, TBS championship. Is she going to be the one to snap the street for Jay Cargill? I don't know. Maybe Chris Stanley could be the one. I don't know. But uh, it's definitely not Anna J, though. It's not going to be her. No. The, but um, I do it's, see, I do see a, a trio match down the road with uh, Jay Cargill and the Baddies versus um, Adina, Anna J, and Chris Danner down the road. Yeah, and I do see Athena being the one to beat um, Jay Cargill. So I'm a huge fan of these segments because I'm a huge fan of Jay. I'm a huge fan of Kiara. No disrespect to Red Velvet, but I'm also a bigger fan of Athena. So, and I'm a big fan of Chris Statlander. So, this segment for me, thumbs up all day because I, I like all the ladies that's involved in it. Um, and I'm a fan of Stokely now, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I like to see where this is going, but I do think this is going where Athena will be the person to defeat the streak of Jay Cargill once and for all. Yeah, no, no, we'll see. And um, speaking of Rampage, 
we already mentioned that Red Velvet will go one on one with with Chris Stanlander. We will see. We will see the AEW debut of Will Osprey and Asha Open versus uh, Trip Beretta and FTR, and then we will be getting a debut of Setnam Singh teaming up with Jay Leto. Uh, we have Eddie Kingston versus um the uh, versus um <clears throat> versus Jake Hager. And then we will hear from Hook Housing, Hook and, uh, and Dan Housing. And then next week's Dynamite is going to be a Royal Ranger uh, special with um, a hair versus hair match with uh, Chris Jericho versus Ortiz. We had the uh, the 20 on one handicap handicap elimination match with Warlow versus the, the plaintiffs. Then we have a all elected championship qualifying match with Eat the Page representing Canada and versus Miro representing Bulgaria, and then the triple threat ladder match for the AEW World Championship to Tag Team Championship with uh, J- Jurassic Spreads to Jungle Boy Lucha Surs versus the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. Sounds like a really good card. Yep. And then um, the main event, William Regal joined on commentary for John Motsi versus uh, Kyle O'Reilly. This was a great main event, but we all know who, who was going to be uh, uh, the, the winner here. And um, the winner of that match will face uh, the winner of uh, uh, Tanahashi versus uh, Guto from um, New Japan's um, the, the Dominion show on, uh, on the 12th uh, at, at Forbidden Door. And then in the final moments uh, uh, of the main event, Masi locked in a sleeper before transitioning into the Bulldog choke. Then Masi then hit the William Knee and then the Paramount and Paradigm Shift now the, for the win. Again, great main event, but we all know who, who was going to be advancing to Forbidden Door. Man, these guys was uh, hitting the hell out of each other, man. Like They were like full contact on some of these. I mean, Mosley Nose was busted and uh, you can just see the battle scars on Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Man, he really can take a punch. He can take a hit. Like, he's a good, like, it was one clothesline that, that Moxley landed. I was like, jeez, Louise, I know that had to hurt. Um, but Kyle O'Reilly did do a good job of t- taking it to Moxley and um, taking, you know, giving him some some of that back at the same time. Um, it was just, it, at one point, they were just in the ring smacking the hell out of each other. Um, and that's what you want. <laughs> that's what I want out of my wrestling matches. So, um, no, this match was like, a, you know, nine out of 10 for me, man. Like, I know, I know the other, I know, I know Messers is five, but for me, it's 10, maybe. Uh, but nine out of 10 for me for this, for this match, these guys just, just, just beat the hell out of each other for 20 minutes. Um, and I enjoyed every second of it. Um, I knew Moxley was going to win. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I was surprised that, Kyle O'Reilly was in that spot to begin with. Um, I wouldn't want to see another Yuta versus Moxley match, especially knowing that Moxley was pretty much going to win it. Um, but it was entertaining. It was hard hitting. It was exactly what you want out of your main event for a wrestling show is these two guys and they're like, you know, smacking it out of each other, giving it their all for a chance to be champ. Now, um, uh, I would say um, John Moxley is going to have a busy week and um, in two weeks. Now, not only he's going to be in the uh, wrestling at Forbidden Door for the interim AEW World Championship match, but he also is, is going to be a part of the Blood and Guts match with um, with Jericho versus uh, the Jericho's Appreciation Society versus um, Eddie Kingston, uh, uh, Santana Ortiz, and the... Um, the 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 Blackpool Combat Club, but um, if Dan- if Brian Danielson is not recovered at the time, I do see Willie Yuta taking uh, uh Brian's place. I can see that definitely. Um, let's hope he is back one hundred percent. But I can definitely see Yuta coming in. Yeah, but um, uh, John Moxley is gonna have a uh, uh like I say, he's gonna have a busy week in two weeks. So upset that uh, Blood and Guts is going to be in Detroit and I can't be there. Shout out to my Detroit family and all my boys in Detroit. But 
they had the Little Caesars Arena, which is a big arena. It's like 14,000, 12, 12 to 14,000 seats. So let's see if they can um, sell that out. This is their first time going to Detroit. This is the first time they're going to be there. So it's interesting to see them go with such a big arena. But I guess the Joe Louis Arena is no longer. I guess the Little Caesars Arena is the new spot for Detroit. So, yeah, it's going to be good to see how they fill that place up. Detroit is a great wrestling city, too. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but Detroit was the spot where when the New Day was first coming out, that was the first town that turned on them. And I was at that show and I was booing the hell out of New Day because I didn't want them to be baby faces. I wanted them to be heels. Um, and that was the first town in the New Day's, um, in the New Day's road. I don't know why I'm talking about New Day, but it was the first town that turned on New Day and booed the heck out of them. Coffee Keeks had talked about uh, uh, one of his uh, interviews, how Detroit was the first town to boo them. Um, <laughs> so Detroit is just a great wrestling city. We definitely go for heels. If you're a face that we think you should be a heel, we will, we will boo the hell out of you. Yeah, but um, yeah, we can't wait for our, our Road Rager next week. And then um, Bloody Guts and uh, Fibbing Door in two weeks. But um, but that's our, our, sh our show for, uh, for, for today. And um, if you guys are... Uh, well, watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, uh, uh, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell when new episodes are uploaded. And of course, if you're listening on on Anchor, um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts, don't forget to um to uh, to to like and subscribe there as, as well. And um and hopefully the, we will be back for um, for the Rampage review show as well. Hey, man, we should be back to our normal schedule um, uh, as for now. I'm back from empathy, so we're going to get back to our regular reviews. Uh, I'm looking forward to Rampage. Rampage has been pretty good lately, so I look forward to Rampage um, and talking to you guys Saturday to review that show. But make sure you like, subscribe, and share send it to all your friends even if they don't like wrestling say hey you can listen to these guys talk about wrestling yeah absolutely and um yeah we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely see y'all for um yeah, for for rampage and then um uh, next week's uh dynamite review but um other than that he's leland and i'm trico and we'll see y'all next time peace